Hello, it's Lee here. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for coming back for uh, what I hope will be an enjoyable video for you. So what we're going to do today is this envelope here, uh, which was made from magazine page and I collaged book pages and scraps onto it and then stamped it. So this is the magazine that the page came from. So it's just a free magazine that comes from the supermarket. It's got really thin paper and um, I, I like them because they're good for doing image transfers on the gel plate. So this is a piece that I already had uh, collaged. So it's just got scraps and bits of book page and a couple of gel prints on there. So bit, just bits and pieces just to um, form a foundation to make the envelope out of. So it's a really simple construction, nothing scientific about it, although I can tell you I did get a few <laughs> things wrong on it. Um, it's not really easy to fold collaged paper, I found out, so don't put anything too thick on it if you make this. So what I, what I want to show you here is, because um, I was going to stamp all over it, I decided um, that I wanted to use some of my word stamps and they're only small stamps, so bits and pieces. So I put together on this block a little um, montage of different different stamps and uh, used this brown paper to try them out. So. This is the way it started out anyway, that was the first one and then I realized oh, everything's too far apart so put everything together closer. Then um, I just kept adjusting it and that one there, that is my final version. Um, down the bottom I actually dropped my ink pad onto my sheet and it made that you know, rectangle on there so I just did a couple more on that piece of paper just for the heck of it. But that's a good way of marking squares off on, you know, just stamping squares and things. So I'm going to use black ink, I believe, to do this. And it's a um, permanent ink, so archival ink. I'm just getting ink all over the different stamp pieces there. And I'll just randomly stamp all over that piece of paper. I love the way that looks. It's, it's really nice. I love it. I was so thrilled with it the way it turned out. So that's um, something to keep in mind if you're doing stamping, like lots of stamping on big areas. If you've got one of these bigger acrylic blocks to put all your little stamps onto it and uh, yeah and you have instant coverage. So I'm just going to put a few more of those stamps on there and I'll just speed you through that part of the video. Alright, so I used another text stamp and a little flower stamp to complete that and it's ready to fold up into an envelope now. Um, I find uh, when, when folding this paper, it's really hard not to, but if you get your fold on a, an over, you know, where there's a big thickness of paper, it's really hard to get it nice and sharp. And also if you fold exactly where there's the edge of a piece of paper that's glued down, it's quite likely to lift up. So you need to keep that in mind. And um, you either got to go through and stick down those things later on um, or use your bone folder if you're having trouble getting a nice sharp crease. 
So this, as I said, was a really simple construction. So I basically just folded it up to the depth that I wanted the envelope, folded over a flap, um, folded the sides in. So I wanted to mark all my folds out and um, then cut off the excess. I'm just um, turning the sides in now. The previous one I made, I, I did it a little bit different to this. Um, I didn't, I made it narrower and cut more off it so I thought this time I didn't want to waste too much of the the paper that I'd gone to the trouble of collaging so as much of it as I can I put into the envelope to make this lovely big envelope which turned out to be about 8 by 6 inches I, I didn't complete, like I know it was 8 inches wide I think it was. Now I can't remember. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm doing a voiceover, it's because I got had microphone problems. But I'm not going to go into that because I don't know whether it's a problem with the microphone or a problem with the user. Anyway, enough said about that. So here I am. I've got my folds done, and I'm going to cut off the excess. So I'm cutting off the side bits from the back of the envelope, which the part that will be the back, which is there and just mitering that corner where the front is because that's going to be folded inwards or over the outside I'm not sure I'm just going to get rid of that entire piece there on both sides because we don't need those bits. I'll just put them aside and I end up using them a bit later on for part of the closure. So I'm just checking my folds to see where everything is working properly. Now on the first one I made I tucked my side bits over the outside and glued them down but on this one I put them on the inside So I'm just looking at that to see whether things look even. Um, there's a bit there that needs to be glued down. But, um, yeah, you find little bits here and there. You just have to keep sticking them down again. I decide that I want to turn over the top of the pocket where items will be put in and out of the pocket. So that will strengthen that up a little bit. And just using my bone folder to make sure it's all nice and sharp. And looking at the size of everything. Um, I think that the pocket needs to be a little bit shorter on that side. So I um, fold that down again. Just to give a bit more room, entry room into the pocket I guess. So I'm just re-mitering the corner there. Now I'm happy with the size of everything. I'm, I'm going to put um, some of this brown paper on the inside of the, the envelope flap so that you don't see any of the magazine when you open up the envelope. I'm going to stick this down with glue stick. Once I've done that I'll trim it off round the corners and then I'll take it to my sewing machine and zigzag around all the um, raw edges or the outside edges and then I'll stitch the sides of the envelope together. So I'm just going to fast forward through this bit.
I'm just checking that everything is all nice and square. Realign that top flap because it was a little bit out due to the bulkiness of the paper when I folded it. And I'm just going to use this jar as a template for rounding these, uh, this flap. So I'll cut one side off and then use the bit I cut off as a guide for the other side. Okay, I'm happy with the way that looks. Now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and do all that zigzagging around the outside edges and stitch the sides of the envelope together. Got all the sewing's done on it now and the sides are sewn together. So basically the envelope is made. And to be honest, you could just leave it as it is. It, it's pretty as it is, I love it. But um, I'm going to have some fun and decorate this one up a bit. So I've got a Tim Holtz uh, found relative photo of a man that I'm going to use as my focal point on my envelope and I've got a piece of book page and my intention is that I will glue down the book page and then rip the edges off from around you know, the outside of it and then do the same with the photo see how that turns out. I saw Mariah from Junk Journal Addict do something like that on, um, I think she was making tags or something and I thought that was a great technique. I really loved it so uh, I thought I'd give it a try. So I've inked around the edge of the envelope with walnut stain and I'm just sort of figuring out where things are going to go and it's at this point that I think oh, this envelope is not big enough for this man to fit on, you know, on without covering him up with the flap. So I decide that what I'll do is put it over the flap, so top and bottom, so paste it over the flap. And then when I finish is to get my craft knife and just cut that you know, cut it so the flap can be lifted up. And, well, that's what I plan to do. So I've never done anything like that before, so I'm not sure how it's going to hold together, whether it'll work, but um, we're going to see. So I'm just going to use glue stick to glue down my book page to begin with. So then I get my heat gun and dry that off. So I want to be able to tear that paper away without it pulling up too much. So I'm just carefully prising up the edge of the page and tearing it off. And it is actually pulling up some of the collaged paper, but that's okay. I'm happy for that. It's um, not doing any real damage. And um, I'm going to ink over that anyway. So after I check that all the edges of that book page are securely down, I then use my vint uh, sorry walnut stain to ink around the edge. Just distress it a little bit. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the photo of the man. So I'm just looking at where he's going to sit. I don't want to have the cut go through the middle of his head or anything. So I'm positioning him so he'll, um, he'll be dissected about the shoulders somewhere. So I'm just looking at where everything is on the photo. There's a chair in there, so I would like to keep that in. in. And if you're Australian, so you'll be knowing that if there's a chair in there, there might be uh, books as well <laughs> and there'd be a bear in there to begin with sorry that's just a little Australian in joke there it's from play school so their theme song was there's a bear in there and a chair as well there's people with games and stories to tell anyway, one of my favorite shows The 
rather than wait for the glue to dry I'm holding down the bits that I want to stay there and I'm pulling up around the edge of the photo to give it a nice tatty look I'm going to be really careful around the head because there's not much above him and it would be pretty easy to rip the top of his head off so just very carefully tearing that off and I'm happy with the way that looks just touching up a couple of places where the glue has not been applied I don't know what I'm talking about there but I'm waving my hands around so must have been saying something can't remember what it was though Oh, I know what I was talking about. So I've decided that I want to um, distress, put some distress ink around the edge of the photo and I'm going to use a speckled egg because there's some blue in some of the background papers. Um, I didn't want to use uh, the walnut stain. I thought it was getting a bit too browny brown. So I'm just going to use the speckled egg, which is quite uh, subtle. And I was really happy with the way it looked. So up in that top left hand corner we've almost got exactly the same same colour. Now I thought about putting that um, that flower in, not, not as a yellow flower but to ink it up and um, I tried staining it a different, you know, a few different colours and it looked horrible so I didn't end up using it, I didn't end up using the bird. Um, I used the red stamp and I wasn't going to use the little bit that I just put off to the side but I do end up adding that in at the end the very end so I'm just going to distress the stamp up a little bit tear the edge and then ink around it I'm going to glue that into the bottom right hand corner so I'm using art glitter glue for these pieces because I think there's just too much product on the you know on the surface now to rely on glue stick I don't think glue stick will will hold well enough more pointing but don't know what I was talking about um, what am I getting oh here I'm going to cut it um, I start to do this and I think oh I'm a little bit wary that I might cut through right through so I, I get this little metal ruler and push it in underneath the flap I uh, use that as a guide and it was also stopped me from cutting right through after I would cut it in a straight line I was thinking oh I wish I'd torn that I think that would look really good There is a little bit on his, you know, on to the right side there that I end up tearing off where it's a bit later on. It sort of seems to hang down a bit lower than the other side, so I do that. So what am I doing now? Um, inking over that edge. And that edge. So that's what he looks like. His head's on the flap and the rest of his body's down on the body of the envelope. Now I'm going to do a little bit of stenciling with some gesso so I get um, a little dotty stencil and do a little bit around the bottom. Now I'm going to put a closure on or make the closures with a couple of um, circles of paper that I cut from the leftovers. Um, I'm not sure what I'm pointing at or talking about but anyway <laughs> the hands going everywhere. Um, so I've got a piece of graph paper that I stained with some 
speckled egg. I was just comparing it to the unstained paper. And I've got a piece of the trim off bit. I'm going to put that on there. And I cut out the word highlights off the brown paper. And I'm going to glue that together as a sort of a label. And before I put it onto the envelope, I'm going to put a little brad through it just um, for decoration. So I thought I was going to put it down there, but I do end up putting it up on the top flap in the end. So I'm just going to fast forward you through these bits. Now that I've decided I like it better up the top on the flap there, I'm going to glue that down and just put a little piece of muslin underneath it. Just stretching that muslin out a little bit to get some of the threads to hang off. Seeing what it looks like. And then I'm going to glue it down with art glitter glue. Happy with that placement, I uh, get my Stabilo pencil and just put a little bit of a shadow around the edge of the label. I thought for the closure that I might um, get a bit techy and use my ruler to make sure I get the brads in the right place, um, the holes I should say, because the envelope is really beautiful, I love it, and I don't want to ruin it by having my closure off center. So I take a little bit of time and mark out where the holes need to be and 
just good thing that I double checked because I actually marked the wrong place. I had the first one too high up, the bottom, the one on the bottom that is. So I redid that. For some reason I thought it was in line, the hole was in line with the E in that word, but it wasn't. It was down a fair bit lower. So you can see I'm going to put the mark in the wrong place. It's in the right place as far as being in the centre, but yeah, too high up. So I change that, pop it down a bit lower, mark out the top one and then use my cropper dial with great difficulty to put the holes in. I, I just couldn't remember where I put my little hand punch. Uh, so I had to fiddle around and squeeze the cropper dial in inside the envelope. You know, it wasn't impossible to do, it was just fiddly. It was probably about as far in as I could have got the machine to, so I was lucky it wasn't in any further. But um it's that's the sort of thing you should do, I suppose, before you before you do your sides you, you know your envelope up, but I didn't think of it that I haven't made enough of these things to um, be that much on the ball so everything's done the hard way and hopefully I'll learn by my mistakes so I've decided that those brads are too small for um, these little button things that I made and I'm getting a bigger brad out to use on them I'm just going to use a piece of masking tape on the inside to cover over the arms of the brad so nothing can catch on them. And then on this top one I just cover it in a scrap of paper that I cut off when I was trimming the envelope up. And I've just got a little piece of string that I'm going to use to tie around the buttons. It's only just long enough too, so I'm a bit of a struggle with this. I thought it was one piece, but it was two smaller pieces. But anyway, it does the job. And I think it looks nice. The buttons just need to be, um, you know, tied off a couple of times so they, I don't know what the word, so they're broken in, I guess. But um, yeah, so I'm really happy with the way that looks. Just admiring my handiwork there. I'm wondering what I can do next on it. I don't want to do too much. But um, I thought maybe some splatters of gesso may look good on it. Not too much, just a little bit. So I put some of them on and then I stick on that little stamped piece of paper over to the left there. Um, ink around the outside of it first and then stick that on. And here it is, all finished off. I love it. Um, I just want to make more of these I really really do love this and I'm so happy with the way it turned out and to think it just started off as a magazine page and scraps of paper and this is what you get let me know in the comments what you think of it
thank you very much for watching really appreciate that and love all your thumbs up and comments and i say cheers from australia hooroo see you in the next video